In this lesson, we shall focus on applied mathematics APM 3711. We are actually looking at numerical methods. To start with, we shall actually discuss a very important notion of what we call the per day approximation, R4 of X. Find, for example, as part of what we need to um, do is to make sure that we cover enough ground um, based on the kinds of things that you're expected to know for assessment purposes. And uh, the party approximation is examinable. And therefore, we will make significant efforts to make sure that you understand the party approximation. So find the party approximation R4 of X with denominator of degree two to the function f of x equals four plus four x squared minus two x to the sixth power. Okay, right, so what do we do in this particular case and how do we, for examination purposes, determine the per day approximation of a given function? This is what we do. So we're gonna do deal with R4 of x. Right, so now the R4 of X can be seen as A0 plus A1X plus. So we're covering the concept of the per day approximation. Right, and so we have A2X squared. Right, the denominator must be of degree two. And therefore you'd have that always this is one. This is always one plus B1, X plus B2, X squared. Exactly like so. Now the question then is, in other words, what is the degree of this rational function here? Within regard, the degree of this rational function as being four, that is why these are four of X, the denominator is of degree two, so that is quadratic. And uh, we make sure always that for the denominator to always be not zero, we put the number one there. And these variables will always be put there. Okay, so we continue to then make the following observation here. So if this becomes the per day approximation, so we know therefore that the per day approximation, so very key to this is writing the following so that you're able to follow even during your own leisure when you go through this discussion. We say the per day, per day approximation. Right, so the per day approximation is okay. We are here, never mind that. Okay, so the party approximation becomes exactly this one down here. What does this therefore give? So this gives, what does it give? It gives R4 of X minus F of X. What is therefore the R4 of X? R4 of X we've already seen here is A0, A1X, A2X squared, all divided by one plus B1, X, B2 of X squared. We subtract F of X, which is this, which is four plus four X squared minus two, x to the sixth power, which will therefore give us minus four, minus four x squared plus two x to the sixth power, which gives which gives. Now the question is, what would this in the end therefore be able to afford us? Right, so this will afford us the product accordingly. Right, and therefore we need to multiply this. If we are to claim therefore that this 
instead of the approximation of this, that will therefore mean a couple of things. But will then it will then mean that the difference of these two here should almost be zero. Now, if the difference of these two equals zero, what then are we able to obtain at the end of this? Right, so you can actually be in a position to write the following. You can be able to write, for example, R4. X minus F of X equals LCD is there. A naught, A1 X, A2 X squared. If need be, can put a minus like this. 4 plus 4 X squared plus 2 X to the sixth power. Multiply by the denominator, taking the LCD, which is 1 plus B1X, B2X squared, all over. All over the common denominator, 1 plus B1X, B2X squared. Just like so. And at this point, we consider this very seriously. But also, if this becomes the approximation of this, we are then able to make certain observations about what happens here as a consequence. It therefore means we can be allowed to then say this therefore becomes zero, which equals A naught a1x, a2x squared, 4 plus 4x squared, 6 power, b2x squared. Okay, so that is what we're able to get. So we actually have that zero expression from the part the approximation relation. We therefore proceed to then say at this point, we need to carry this forward. So we proceed to then say, we therefore have that zero is A naught. A1x, A2x squared, 4, 4x squared, 2x to the sixth power. See here. Right, so this is going to be negative. If you factor out this negative, this is going to be a negative. It's going to be taking the same sign there. It's going to actually be 4 plus uh, 4x squared minus 2x to the sixth power. And it's going to be negative 2x to the sixth power, which is exactly what we have here. 1 plus b1x b2 <clears throat> b2 <clears throat> x squared exactly like so what is this okay we perform the algebraic manipulations that are necessary and we're able to then achieve that is zero a1x a2x squared. Distribution. So now you have minus 4b1x cubed. 
Okay. So minus 2x to the sixth power. x to the eighth power. x to the eighth power. Okay, we are just, it's just distribution. We open up the brackets. We check again. We have the four that multiplies through. Four times one is four, obvious negative with the negative outside. Four with the B1 is minus four B1x minus four B2x squared. Then we take the minus 4x squared, we distribute, which is minus 4x squared. Minus 4x squared by this, it's minus 4b1x cubed, minus 4b2x to the fourth power. Then we have the minus 2x to the sixth power, which comes out of this. But obviously, we agree it's going to be actually exactly a plus. So because of the negative, negative, so it's going to be plus there plus the and plus the. So you're going to be actually having the 2x to the 6th power, but it's going to be positive because it's negative, negative. And then now also there's 2x to the 6th power with the b, which is 2b1, um, x to the 7th power. And then this one is going to be 2b2, x to the 8th power. Okay, we're good. It remains to just group like terms together. And uh, if we do group the like terms together, we're able to actually obtain the following. What exactly are we able to obtain here as a matter of fact? Let us look at the constants. Right, so the constants become, right, right. Right, 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 right. So we continue. Okay, yeah, we continue, please. Now, when we continue, we make certain observations about what happens here, as a matter of fact. What observations are we able to see? Right, we're able to see that. Okay. Group like terms, please, all constants. It's going to be A naught. There's A naught. And then there's a minus 4. And there's no other constant term. So we're going to put A naught to minus 4. Right, so if that is the case, this is our A naught. And then... We continue, let us check. Then we have the linear terms. The x terms, there is an a1x. So there is a1x and then there's 4b minus 4b1. Minus 4b1x and then there is an x term. No, no other. And then we have x like this. Then now we'd have the Quadratic terms, A2. Right after we have the A2, you would have the minus 4B2. Minus 4B2. Um, right, minus 4B2 for the X squared, minus 4. So A naught, this. A1, that, okay? And then A2 minus 4B2, the minus 4. So we're done with all those. And then now we're going to look at the cubic terms. And the cubic terms would be plus minus 4B1. Okay, yeah, it's only one um, cubic term. So you're going to put minus 4B1 x cubed. And then um, the x to the fourth power minus 4b2x to the fourth power 
x to the sixth power. Right, so we're going to check x to the sixth power. Right, so x to the sixth power, we can see there is a 2x to the sixth power. Right. It's exactly 2x to the sixth power. And then there is 2b1, x to the seventh power, 2b2, x to the eighth power. So what we then do is we equate. We continue to equate. Right, we continue to actually equate. Coefficients. Coefficients of like powers of X. Okay, now the X to the power zero would be the following. A naught minus four equals zero. And then now we have X to the power one which is A1 minus 4B1, 0. We continue to equate. Then we have the quadratic. Like powers of x squared. Four B2 minus 4 equals 0. And then x cubed. Minus 4b1 equals 0. And then you also have x to the fourth power. Right, so the x to the fourth power is going to give us Minus 4b2 equals 0. Okay, we equate everything to 0 because there's 0 on the on this side. There's 0 on the um, on the left of the equation. Now we stop at x to the power 4 because it is r4 of x, and then we ignore the higher powers. We ignore the higher powers. Okay. Right, at this point... We then, I'm doing this because uh, it is uh, one of those questions where you must be rest assured that you pass. You get full marks in this particular uh, question here. This question ordinarily comes at the end. Comes at the end. So that is why I'm making sure that um, I'm doing this first because it doesn't change drastically. So you therefore have a perfect chance to understand everything. So that in the end, then you get what? You get the following. You have a perfect chance to get exactly the following. So now we pause to reason, but also to examine the findings very cautiously. The question is, can we be able to person to get the numerical values of the constants at this point? And so obviously, I'm sure that you actually are saying Obviously, yes, we can. We can get the the the, the, the constants there. We can get the, the the all the values we want. Okay, let us uh, say that. Now we have said that. What you need to do? We equate. We equate the coefficients. And when we do equate the coefficients, we actually have been able to gather some facts. What are the facts from the previous? Yeah, that's fine. I can write like that. The x to the naught was associated with a naught minus 4 equals 0. 
X1. Minus 4B1. X2. Minus 4B2. X3. Right. X4. Minus 4B2. Let us analyze that together. So we are able to obtain this. And from this here, what is the next step? Is to solve for the unknowns and get the numerical values of the unknowns. And we say, therefore, therefore we have that right from this particular equation, it is clear that, it is clear that our A naught is four. And they are the, when A naught is four, that is what we're able to get here. From this one, from this one, we're able to get that B1 is zero. B1 is zero. From this one, we're able to get that B2 is zero. Dividing by negative four. So B1, B2. If B1 is zero, you plug it into this. It means therefore that A1 is also zero. B1 is zero, B2 is zero. If B, um, if uh, B2 is zero, you plug it in here. A2 minus zero minus four. So now, okay, this is what we have got. But now you need to recall what are we then supposed to recall at this point? There are certain things we need to remember, but what should we remember? Recall that. Right, so you need to recall that. You need to recall that R4 of X is actually equal to A0 plus A1X plus A2X squared all divided by 1 plus B1X b2 x squared. What is a naught? It is 4. a1, a2. a1, you can put um, 0x. a2 is a 4. x squared, you divide by 1 plus. What is the b1? It is 0x. The b2 is 0. which is 4 plus 4x squared. Okay, yeah, so. Therefore, it means this is the answer. Um, we can then say our R4 of x is actually the same as 4 plus 4x squared. And this, therefore, becomes the answer we want. So obviously, what have we done? We have found the part the approximation R4 of X with denominator of degree two, denominator of degree two. But if they said denominator of degree two, you must start with one. We don't care about what you put as the coefficients of X and that of X squared. And then obviously, because uh, it is of degree, uh, denominator of degree two, but it's, uh, it's, it, it's overall degree four, it must be two, then this must also be two, so that two plus two gives us 40. Now the coefficients here, you can write anything. I mean, you can write x squared plus bx plus c, you know, standard quadratic. 
And then now in the denominator, you always put a one and then you play around with the coefficient of x and that of x squared. But in the end, then you are able to therefore find the pi day approximation r4 of x. And r4 of x is actually here, 4 plus 4x squared. And this is the result. This becomes the result. This becomes the result. Next point. Right, the next question is to solve for another economization problem. As part of what we're learning, we must be able to economize. How do we economize? We economize as follows. This is what we do. Right, so we economize as follows. Right, now the first three chef and chef polynomials are T naught is one, T one is exactly X, T two is two X squared minus one, T three of X is four X cubed minus three X, T four of X is eight X to the fourth power minus eight X squared plus one. Economize the truncated power series. Economize the truncated power series. Okay, now let us continue to check this out. Right, so now the power series given is P of X equals 1 plus 2X minus X cubed plus 3X to the fourth power. Let us economize these and look at how to economize a given power series. Now, this is the story. What you then need to do is to first things first, consider the following scenario. Okay. What you need to do is to consider the following scenario. Consider the fact that we have been given the power series P of X, which is exactly 1 plus 2X minus X cubed plus 3X to the fourth power. So now what you then need to do is to then compare the coefficients. Right, so if you have, for example, this Px, which is 1 plus 2x minus x cubed plus 3x to the fourth power. You consider, for instance, the term. So you must reduce the degree because at this point, what you have here is that the degree, the highest degree of this one is um, 4. And also, the T4 has highest degree 4. So now the question then becomes, what exactly do we do here? You need to perform subtraction. You need to perform exactly subtraction. So if you multiply this one, by a certain number, it's going to actually have the same degree, the same coefficient of x to the fourth power. So you can multiply this one by 3 out of 8. T4 of x. Right, so because if you do 3 out of 8, you multiply this 8x to the fourth power. plus one, which is three X to the fourth power plus three out of eight. So we multiply through by the three out of eight, why? Because this one, we want to make sure that the coefficient of X to the power four is the same. And we achieved that because this is three X to the fourth power and this is also three X to the fourth power. So we are getting a step closer to actually economizing.
then we shall be able to get the economized series. We write the following description that is very important. So we're going to then say subtract. You proceed to then say subtract. Three out of eight, two fourth X from P of X in order. To remove the highest order the highest order term right so as to get the economy series the economy series So that you have G of X right. So now we therefore are, are able to obtain the economized series. And so we learn how to what is to economize a series? To econ to find the economized power series, um, it's to actually truncate. So economize the truncated power series. And therefore, what we then do to, to economize, we subtract 3 out of 8 t fourth x from p of x in order to remove the highest order term so as to get the economized series. So you perform algebraic subtraction. So this is therefore p of x. Right, before we deal with the main thing. So it's p of x minus 3 out of 8. T4 of X. Subtract from P of X like, like so. The answer, what then do we get? We are able to get the following point. Meaning G of X is equal to, what is P of X? Okay, we know it is 1 plus 2X minus X cubed plus 3X to the fourth power. Okay, we're copying this one. Exactly as it is. We minus. We minus. Minus, minus, minus. So we minus 3x to the fourth power plus 3 out of 8. which is 1 plus 2x minus x cubed, 3x to the fourth power minus 3x to the fourth power plus 3x squared minus 3 out of 8. Okay, let us check together the algebra. So now, this is what we're getting. The economized series, it's the G function. So you can even write it here so that G of X becomes the same as the following. So now, okay, this is our G of X. So what is it? Let's check together. We're going to add the, the like terms and things like that. So now we're able to see this guy and this guy cancel out. And we have managed to eliminate the highest, the highest order terms. And then we have minus x cubed in descending powers of x plus 3x squared. Minus 3x cubed plus 3x squared. 
plus 2x. 1 minus 3 out of 8. 5 out of 8. This is the answer. So when they say economize the truncated power series, this is the power series given. You need to economize it. And we have economized it. How to economize is to reduce the highest power to make sure that uh, it is potentially then cost effective. Cost effective. What is the next thing to do now? Is to answer the second part of the question. Give an upper limit for the absolute value of the difference between the original truncated power series and the economized one. For all shape by shape polynomials. The old shape by shape. Right, polynomials. What do we have? For all shape by shape polynomials, which we call T sub I, we have. Right, what do we have? We have that the modulus of T sub I is always less or equal to 1. For all, for all x in the closed interval minus one to one. And therefore, and therefore, And therefore, okay, once again, here comes the question, and it says, give an upper limit for the absolute value of the difference between the original truncated power series and the power series. They are the original truncated power series and the economized one. which means that the original is P of X, aeons Okay. So this is what we did, because now when you look at this equation, we then said from the original power series, you you minus 3 out of 8 of t4 of x. Now, let us look this at this properly. So you perform algebra. Whatever you do, it means that whenever you have g of x minus p of x, it is actually exactly the same as minus 3 out of 8 t of x. Okay, this is what we have. But if you take the absolute value, then, you know, you can play around with this here. But the taking the absolute value will actually ensure that you can also, looking at this, you can also, you know, like, do it differently. 3 out of 8, T for X, which is PX, G of X. Okay, we here. So the modulus of P of X minus G of X is actually the same as the modulus of the absolute value of 3 out of 8 T4 of X. Like this. But once again, we said that for all chef by chef polynomials Ti, we have that between minus 1 and 1, 
they are less or equal to one. The modulus is less or equal to one. So, the, so this one is going to be less or equal to three out of eight because this one is less or equal to one. And then for now, it remains to use a calculator for the shift by shift polynomials to check the results. So this is then what we, this is then what we do. All right, this is then exactly what we do. We can just, uh, just confirm this. I know that this is very easy and can be done with so much ease. Okay, so, so we have the following. So now we're gonna take a calculator and say, whenever you have three divided by eight, okay, I know this you can done with ease, you rather can do with ease, which is 0 0.375. 0 0.375. 0 0.375. 0. 0. 0.375. 0 0.375. That is the answer. So obviously the question was in the second Roman figure. Give an upper limit for the absolute value of the difference between the original truncated power series, which is the original truncated power series P of X and the economized one. This is the original and the economized one. And therefore the difference is that. Therefore, the difference is that. Therefore, the difference is that. So we continue. So we continue. We continue. Next question. As part of our learning strategies, it is very important to reinforce every concept to learn by not only looking at how this question is asked in one instance, but in multiple, several instances. The question then that arises is, what about if they change the numbers? In the concept that we think we so much understand at the moment, but we need to be sure that we, we can do any question that comes our way. They, cannot, they might not only say the R4, but what about if they say R3 of X? Find a per, per day approximation of R3 of X. Okay, if you need to find a per day approximation of R3 of X, what then do you do here? With numerator, before they gave us now numerator degree two of degree two and denominator of degree one to the function f of x equals x squared plus the x cubed. Okay, we're mastering this concept there so that we can move on to other concepts. Now, let us ponder on this one. So we know that the per day. The per day approximation. The per day approximation is so now the per day approximation is going to be exactly be what the R three of x, but the numerator is of degree two, which means a zero a one x a two x squared. 1 plus B1X. So, in the denominator is of degree 1, but you always put a 1 there. 
and then you add the B1, X. Because of degree one, so you stop at the linear of uh, the power of X. And then here, this one is a quadratic term in the numerator of degree two, yeah? To the function this. The part the approximation and uh, these gives We can find the difference like we did before. R3 of x minus the f function. What is R3 of x is this one? Numerator of, uh, numerator of degree 2, a naught a1x plus a2x squared divided by 1 plus b1x minus f of x. This one? which is x squared plus x cubed. Which simplifies to which simplifies to Okay, so so now, which is R three of x minus f of x. Let us simplify this by taking the LCD, etc., which is one plus b one x, and then we just add these things up like we did before. Okay, just mustering the concept of part the approximations and then we move to other sections. And so at this point, this would mean that we're gonna have like a node, a1x, a2x squared, which is this, minus, then this thing becomes like cross multiplication because it's the same denominator, so it multiplies this. You have x squared, x cubed, one plus b1 of x. Okay, so that is what we're able to achieve. R3 minus f of x. The okay, so what then are able to achieve? Because if it becomes a part the approximation, the understanding is therefore that the numerator will approach zero. So this therefore it implies that a node a one x um a two x squared x squared plus x cubed one plus b one of x is equal to zero. Which is what? A1x. A2x squared. You distribute, you open up the brackets. Minus x squared minus b1x cubed. So now, x to the fourth is zero. So now, in the end, so which means this A1x, then quadratic is A2 minus 1, x squared. B1 minus 1, x cubed. So we have this. So now, let's continue and be in a position to get the result out of this. So let us take everything into account that we've got 
pertaining this problem. Seven marks, this question. So you get this question. We have already passed the exam because it's out of 100, by and large, normally. So if it's out of 100, then you get this mark, then we have sort of passed. Okay, so that will be the C part. So now you would then have, we've got A naught, A1X, A2 minus 1, X squared, minus 1, x cubed to the fourth power equals zero equals zero equals zero so what then you're able to get we do like our usual stuff we compare coefficients so by comparing coefficients we're able to get what we need to, the most so we then say to find to find uh, the four find the four unknown values Unknown values A naught A one A two and B one A two and B one. We must set the coefficients. The coefficients of x to the power 0, x to the power 1, according to this, x to the power 0 for the constant, x to the power 1 for x, x to the power 2 for x squared, x to the power 3 in the numerator, in the numerator to 0. This These give us the equation. Okay, let us uh, obviously, these give us the equations. Even here you can say and x cubed. In other words, we must set the coefficients of x to the zero, x to the one, x squared and x cubed. To zero. So which means therefore f to the power zero. Right, so now let us write everything in order. We are ordering these coefficients. So f to the power zero will deal with the constants, and therefore that would mean a naught is zero. And the four, x to the power one, linear. Okay, we'll continue, please.
x squared would become the following. The quadratic zero x cubed zero x to the fourth zero So thus Okay, yeah, you actually have sent a message there. Okay, but we are going on right we are going on So thus, this would therefore mean that, okay, if it, lo if it kicks you out, please, you try to log in again. Right. Once again, if it kicks you out, try to log in, please. If it kicks you out, try to log in. But this discussion is being recorded. So um, there's not going to be any interruption. There's going to be a smooth running from beginning to end. There's going to be a smooth running from beginning to end. There's going to be a smooth running from beginning to end. There's going to be a smooth running from beginning to end. Okay, we continue. If it kicks you out, please be glad to just um, reconnect, please. But once again, because we are recording this discussion, okay, good. Thank you so much. Right, so thus, it would therefore mean that A naught is zero from this. From the second equation, it means that A1 is zero. And then from this one, we can see that A2 is 1. We are able to see Okay, yeah, because it's R3, then you stop here. It's R3, then you're going to stop here. We're going to stop at X cubed. Okay. We're going to stop at X cubed. Obtaining B1, it's minus 1. And uh, as a consequence, we're then saying, hence the party approximation. Hence, the party approximation. Is. Okay, now we know that this party approximation is written like this. It's R3 of X, which is A0, A1, A2, 1 plus V1X. So B one X A one B one So now it's one plus B one X What is A note? A note is zero. Take it from here. Um B one it's a negative negative one x a two it's a one divided by one plus the b one 
It's minus one. X. Meaning these are three of X becomes exactly the following. So the what then you're gonna get here becomes exactly the following, yeah. Yes. Okay, this one is this one is a one x a one x a one x a two. So remember that having the a's a's only. So this one is gonna be a not a one. which is A1X. What is A1? It's zero. It's zero. So, that in the end, Divided by one minus X. Okay, so we get this. All right, so this becomes exactly the answer and this becomes the pi day approximation. Hence the pi day approximation is this one. So in other words, uh, you have learned the pi day because it's R3, we're gonna stop here at the x cubed, there's no need to proceed to the x to the fourth power because it is R3 of x. After having done that, it's very important to attempt to learn the process of economizing power series. But now sometimes you might need to economize the power series twice. Okay. You might need to economize the power series twice. So if you economize the power series twice, we will take the opportunity to say, we have learned how to economize the power series once, what you call the truncated power series. Um, we can economize it once, but we economized it once before, just in the next, in the past couple of minutes. But we might need to economize it like several times. The question then is how do we then economize it for several times? So now we might need to economize it two times, three times, 10 times. The prevailing question then becomes how do we economize it successively? How do we economize the power series successively? We take note of that and we reason that out. We reason that out and we obtain the following. We obtain the following. Okay. Now, given the power series f of x equals 1 minus x minus 2x cubed minus 4x to the fourth power. So you have been given this power series, but it is standard practice to actually give it with some polynomials. And in this case, our famous polynomials that we know very well are the Chapeshev polynomials. T0x1, T1x, which is x, T2x, T3x, T4x. So, economize the power series twice. Economize the power series twice. So, we have the following. We need to learn how to economize it twice. 
Right, so to economize the power series twice, we proceed as follows. We take note of the fact that f of x, this is the solution, 1 minus x, 2x cubed, minus 4x to the fourth power. So you economize it once first and then you economize it again. So you're going to economize you're going to economize once first. We add we add or subtract We add or subtract T4. But not that we add or subtract T4, but like we did before, suitably scaled. Such that. Such that. The F to the fourth power term. disappears the f to the fourth power term disappears this is the story and this is our story to economize once we add or subtract t4 suitably scaled such that the f to the fourth term disappears so to economize, we need to first get rid of the x to the fourth power, which is the highest one. And then we would, we would have to economize uh, twice. So we would have to also remove the cubic term there. OK, we'll continue. So here. So here, we must add we must add one half of T4. Okay, now this one because we want to make the coefficient of x to the fourth power uh, switch up with the same as this. So we, we can multiply this one by half. Right. Right. Here we must add half to four. And this half to four, it's half of this. Eight x to the fourth power. Okay. Okay, we continue, please. So we continue. So now here we must add half to four of x. 
which is this, which is 4x to the fourth power, 4x squared plus 1 half. So multiply by that, 1 half. And we'll get the economized series. Right, we'll get the economized series. And we'll get the economized series. Right. And we'll get the economized series. And the economized series is going to be F star of X. What would F star of X be? You can see that if you have this one and we have four to the fourth power in this, you add them up, the the the, the f to the fourth power is gonna disappear. Okay, so you have f of x. What is f of x? One minus x. 2x cubed minus 4x to the fourth power. So, which means f star of x. Let us look at what we're getting the f star to be. This cancels. These actually cancels exactly, giving us minus two X cubed. Minus X. Minus four X squared. Minus x, this and that, minus x, 1 plus 1 half is 3 out of 2. So what we then do? Next, economize again. Economize again. So now we need to deal with the X cubed. But we need to deal with the x cubed. So what you're going to do is you, you need to add 83 suitably scaled. Such that. The x cubed term disappears. So we continue. 
disappears. Right. Okay, so now we need to economize again because you economize the first and then you need to economize again. So we can economize uh, like many times, a finite number of times at least. So to economize again, what we do, we add T3 suitably scaled such that the X cubed term disappears. We must add Okay Okay now because we economized and got f star of x and this f star of x became minus 2x cubed Minus 4x squared. Minus x. Plus 3 out of 2. So if you look at the x cubed, this one. We want to make the coefficient of x cubed the same. So we must add 1 half of t3 of x. What is T3? So you have 2x cubed. 3 out of 2x. This is what you're getting. And uh, because T3 is this one, you take half of it. We continue right now and we're able to get the following. Okay. And uh, we'll, we'll get, we'll get F double star of X, which is the second economized series. And then now we remember that we've got the first economized series, which is F star of X. plus one half T3 of X, which is minus which is minus 2X cubed minus 4X squared minus X plus 3 over 2. What is half T3 of X? Is this plus 3 over 2x? And what is this? Okay, obviously by looking at this carefully, we are able to make certain observations like the cubic terms disappear. Minus 4x squared. Right, so we have minus 4x squared. Right, so we have minus 4x squared. 
And they were able to obtain the following. Minus 4x squared. Now we have to deal with the over 2x minus x. 2 out of 2. Which is x out of 2. Right? Let's check this out. Let us check this out. So this, therefore, is going to be exactly x out of 2. which is plus 3 out of 2. So this becomes, therefore, the answer. At this point, we, we have to economize the power series twice. And this is what we have done. This is what we have done. This is what we've done. Okay. And then now we've got F double star, which is exactly this. So it's minus four X squared plus x over 2, and a 3 out of 2. So we've economized this power series problem twice. But now we need to answer the next question. The function, the function, e to the power x is to be approximated by a four-fifth order polynomial over the interval from minus one to one. Why is the chef by chef series a better choice than a Taylor or Maclaurin expansion? The function e to the power x is to be approximated by a fifth order polynomial over the interval minus one to one. Why is the chef by chef series a better choice than a Taylor or Maclaurin expansion? So we continue. We continue. Okay, we read the question again for the four marks. The exponential function, the function e to the power x is to be approximated by a fifth order polynomial over the interval from minus one to one. Why is a chef by chef series a better choice than a Taylor or Maclaurin expansion? Let us analyze this together. And the reason for this would be the following. Right, we note that the maximum error the maximum error over the whole interval The whole interval is smaller, is smaller 
the maximum error over the whole interval is smaller, the Taylor. The Taylor series has zero error at x equal to zero. But the error But the error can be quite large. Can be quite large at it, it x equal to plus or minus one. So now we're then effectively to answer this question for the four marks. We are first saying the maximum error over the whole interval is smaller. The Taylor series has zero error at x equal to zero, but the error can be quite large at x equal to plus or minus one. So we continue. We continue. Right. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay, we continue, please. We continue. So, but that will be the answer. That will be the answer. So, that will be the answer. So the maximum error over the whole interval is small. The Taylor series had zero error at x equal to zero, but the error can be quite large at the extremes, at plus or minus one. So in other words, the function e to the power x is to be approximated by a fifth order polynomial over the interval. Why is the chef by chef series be a better choice? Now we're saying why is the chef by chef series a better choice than a Taylor or Maclaurin expansion? Because the maximum error over the whole interval is smaller. But also the Taylor series has zero error at zero. But the error can be quite large at plus or minus one. And hence, a chef by chef series is certainly a better choice than what we call a Taylor or Maclaurin expansion. We continue to check this out. Right. Okay. Next. Next. Right, there are a couple of things you need to study. The couple of things we need to study here. And uh, I want us to learn how to solve a wide range of problems. In this case here. I want us to learn how to solve a wide range of problems in this case here. 
And uh, we continue to practice even much more. And uh, I want us to spend time on this particular type of problem. Okay, I want us to spend some time on a wide range of problems. One of the most famous methods is the notion of this one. The Adams Moulton method. Adams Moulton method. Right, so in the case of the Adams Moulton method, let's practice with the Adams Moulton method, which I'll learn a couple of other methods. But now we are doing the what you call the predictor corrector formulas of the Adams Moulton method. So, what are the predictor corrector formulas? And you are told that. So we need to just learn these and make sure we know them. Normally they are given in the exam, but it will help to actually, you know, master them and know them off by heart. Right. So the predictor corrector. The predictor corrector formulas of the Adams Martin method are the following, y n plus one is y n plus h out of 24, open bracket 55, f sub n minus 59 sub, subscript n minus one plus 37, f subscript n minus two minus nine, f subscript n minus three, plus 251 divided by 720 h to the five, y to the fifth power, evaluated at at, uh, at xi, xi1. Right, so that is the predictor. And then the corrector, the corrector is yn plus one. So in other words, this one here is the predictor. Okay, this is the predictor. And then we have also the corrector. This one here is the predictor. And this one becomes the corrector. Right, so we continue to analyze this very carefully. Let us zoom in to these methods here before we even solve the problems on the Adams Moulton method. The predictor formula, what is the predictor formula? You need to memorize it. You need to learn it. You need to understand it before you even like apply the methods. Predictor is y n plus one equals y n plus h out of 24, 55, f subscript n minus 59, f subscript n minus one plus 37, f subscript n minus two minus nine, f subscript n minus three plus 251 over 720, h to the four, 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 five, the fifth time, the fifth derivative evaluated, the fifth derivative of y evaluated at xi1. That is the predictor. The corrector is yn plus 1, which is yn plus h out of 24, 9fn plus 1 plus 19fn minus 5nn minus 1 plus fn minus 2 minus 19 divided by 720. H to the power five, Y fifth uh, uh, derivative of Y evaluated at XI2. So these are the predictor and corrector. Both of them are YN plus one, YN plus one. Both of them have YN, YN. Both of them have H out of 24, H out of 24. But the difference becomes in the subsequent terms, right, in the subsequent terms. 
Okay. Apply the following. You need to apply the Adams Moulton method to calculate the approximate value of the function. Apply the Adams Moulton method to calculate the approximate value of y at 0.8 and also um, y evaluated at 1.0 from the differential equation. From the differential equation, you need to approximate the values of this. Y evaluated at 0.8, Y evaluated at 1.0 from the differential equation. And the starting values are the following. T evaluated at 0, 0.0, at 0, uh, 0.0. Y, T evaluated at 0 0.95. T at 0 0.2, 0 0.68. T at 0 0.4, 0 0.55. T at 0.6. Not point three zero. Use three decimal digits with a rounding at each step. Okay, use three decimal digits with rounding at each step. Okay, let us uh, learn the methods here and appreciate the Adam Smolton, a very, very examinable, uh, very examinable method stage. So to answer this question, we begin as follows. Right, so we know that we are, we say C, which is Y primed, it's T plus Y. But this, it's F evaluated at T and Y. Okay, continue. The given starting values. The given starting values are n equals one. N equals two. N equals three. N equals four. And then you have uh, the value of T. T1 is 0, 0. And then there's T2, not 0.2. T3, 0.4. T4, 0.6. Y1, we have the following. Okay, so... Okay, now let's deal with the y's. Y1 is 0 0.95. Y2, 0 0.68. Y3, 0.55. Y4, 0 0.30. And then now we're going to determine the Fs. F3. Okay, now there's F1, F2, F3, and the, the Fs come from the fact that the differential equation is now called a function of T and Y multi-variable function of t and y. 
answer, we're able to determine this function like F1. So F1 becomes the sum of T and Y. So here you're going to add T and Y. But this is just 0 plus 0 0.95. So you're going to only get 0 0.95. Then here you're going to add this and that. But 0 0.2 plus 0 0.68 would give us 0 0.88 because it's t plus y. 0 0.9, 0 0.4 plus 0 0.55 would give us 0 0.95. 0 0.6 with 0 0.3 would give us 0 0.9. Okay, so we've completed a table of the f's, the y's, the t's, and the n's. Let us... First, uh, calculate the predictor. The predictor is uh, let's check, uh, take a look here. So the predictor is the first one. Yn plus 1 is Yn. Plus h out of 24, 55n minus 59, fn minus 1, plus 37, fn minus 2, minus 9, fn minus 3, plus 251 out of 720. So now, so you have y n plus one. So now, the edge out of twenty four. Fn minus 59, Fn minus 1, 37, Fn minus 2, 9, Fn minus 3, So now, plus this. And uh, now, if you're going to do, so we're dealing with the predictor. So the predictor now, because you can see that this Y is the, you have Y1, Y2, Y3, Y4, then we must do Y5. Y5 then is going to be Y4. H out of 24. Which is 4. And then we are putting 4 in the place of N. 4 in the place of N. This one, this one is going to be 3. 4 minus 1 is 3. 4 minus 1 is 3, and then 4 minus 2, it's 2. 4 minus 3, it's a 1. Okay, now what is y4? Not point three. Y4 is not point three zero.
So now, now obviously, the fact that this is not point not not point two not point four not point six, the difference here is not point two not point two, which means that h is not point two, which means that h is not point two. F4. F4 is 0.9. 59. F3. 0.95. F3 is 0.95. And then there is 37. F2. 0.88 f2 0.88 f1 0.95 okay Now this is the case, and then you're getting y5. Let us use a calculator to, to get the answer here. Okay, let's use a calculator to get the answer. So now here you're gonna use the task bar. which is 0 0.30, 0 0.2 divided by 24, 55 times, minus 59, Not point nine five thirty seven times not point eight eight minus nine times not point nine five close bracket. Not point four four five five. Not point four four five five. So the F five according to this, because this is F X Y. So the F five according to this, it's gonna be. T5 plus T5 plus Y5. What is T5? We saw that this is T1, T2, T3, T4, T5, you add 0 0.2 because it's 0 0.2, 0 0.2. You add 0 0.2, you get this. 0 0.2, you get 0 0.4. You add 0 0.2, you get 0 0.6. You add 0 0.2, you get that. So now we have Y5. Right. Right, 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 right. Okay, T5 is 0 0.8, that's what. T5 is 0 0.8, yeah?
Check. So we're going to do 0 0.8 plus 0.4455. Five five. 1.2455. Five five. 1 1.2455. Five five. One point. Right, so we have exactly 1.24. Five five, which is F five. So now so now we have found the predictor. We found the predictor and then you find the corrector. And the corrector is right. So come to the corrector. Remember that the corrector is yn plus 1, which is yn plus plus h over 24. yn plus 1, the corrector. yn plus 1 is yn plus h over 24. Open bracket. 9 fn plus 1 plus 19 fn minus 5 fn minus 1 plus fn minus 2 close bracket minus 19 over 720 uh, h to the 5 uh, the fifth uh, order derivative of uh, at xy of, of y at xi2 this is the corrector but we want to obtain y5 of this so we proceed as follows and the corrector is So we're going to do the corrector. Yn plus 1 plus Fn plus 1. And then plus twenty. So Right. Okay, so we continue. Okay, continue. Okay. Let us... Uh, Get the answer. Let us get the answer. Okay, let's get to this point. Okay, now we are getting the corrector but you see the way we're getting the corrector now then we need to get y5 when n is 4 and then when n is n is 4 when n is 4 
when n is 4, when n is 4, which means y5. So what is y4? y1, y2, y3, y4. y4 is 0.3. H is the difference here. H is 0.2. What is F5? Check here. F5 is this one. 1.2455 from the from the predictor. 1.2455. What is F4? F4, you already know we said it is not 0.9, but yeah, we got it here. F4 from the table we, we drew is not 0.9. That is F4. Not 0.9 minus 5. Then we have F3. F3, not 0.95, not 0.95. F2, F2, not 0.88, not 0.88, not 0.88. And then now we just use our calculator to get the answer here. So the corrector is that one. And then now we're going to do the following. Using a calculator. So what we have here is that we have 0.3. Plus not point two divided by twenty four nine times one point two four five five plus nineteen times not point nine minus five times. 0.95 plus 0.88. Okay. Let's see what we're getting here. Let us do this again. Let's see. Ah, oh, okay. There's a small typo here. The decimal point is missing. 0.3 plus... Not point two, twenty four, nine times one point two four, five five plus nineteen times not point nine, minus five times not point nine five plus not point eight eight. Okay, let's check this one. 0 0.503625. So you can run it off to 0 0.5037. And then now you need to get F5. And F5 is, according to this, this is FTY. So F5 is T5 and Y5. Not point 0.8. Not point 0.5037. Is 
so that in the end, Not point eight plus not point five zero three seven. Okay, then we're getting F five is one point three zero three seven, one point three zero three seven, one point three zero three seven. That is our F five. Next. We actually now found the, the predictor and the corrector. And so we're going to therefore continue and uh, we're going to compute it the next step. Next, we then say, for example, at. At t equals 1.0, the predictor is the predictor is Okay. You'd remember that you already know the predictor. It is yn plus one, which is yn plus h over 24, 55, fn minus 59, fn minus one plus 37. F n minus two minus nine. F n minus three plus two fifty one divided by seven twenty. H five. X i one. And then at this point, this one is the predictor. What are you going to get? Y6. Y6 means that N is 5. Y5, H out of 24. F5 minus 59, 4. 3. F, yeah, F, N is 5. Two, because it's five minus three, which is two, and then you leave out the the other term. Y five. You have already got y five, which is um zero point five zero three seven. H yeah, is not point two divided by twenty four. Fifty five, then you have F five. F five is one point three zero three seven. F five is one point three zero three seven. One point three zero three seven. F four. What time is your meeting? What time is your meeting? F four. F4 is 0 0.9. F4 is 0 0.9. F3. F3 is not 0.95. F3 is not 0.95. Not 0.95. F2. F2 is not point eight eight. It's 
So now we have y6. So now, node point five, zero three seven plus node point two, twenty four, fifty five times one point three zero. Three seven minus fifty nine times not point nine plus thirty seven not point nine five minus nine times not point eight eight. We close the brackets. 0.8856 f6 according to this because this is f of ty t5 Y5. What is T5? T1, T2, T3, T4, T5. T5 is 1.8. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Yes, please. I just want to know, um, why are we not adding the 251 over 720 when we are working out Y6? It's the order term. We don't add the order terms. Okay, yeah, oh, okay. That's, that's the point. Because it's an order term, that one, it is H to the 5. Normally, we then say um, the order has to do with the um, the dominant terms or the terms or the term of the highest degree. Uh, but I, I'm going to discuss the order terms at some point, but we, we never add the order terms. We don't add them up. So, uh -huh. so, for okay. operational purposes, they give they give the equation some character. They characterize the equation, then so they don't have any numerical significance. Quite okay. Uh -huh. So good. So that now you have T five and then the H and and, and the Y five. So what is T five? T five is not point eight, and then Y five. We got our Y five, and we got our Y five to be exactly what we got. Which is not point five zero five is not point five zero three seven. So it's uh, not point five zero three seven. And then you add these things. Let us add this up with the calculator just to make sure we cross check our answer. Right. So now what we're then getting is we have this one. Not point eight plus not point five zero three seven, which is one point three zero three seven. Right, so you're getting exactly one point three zero three seven. So if you have your Um, okay, there's something I need to add here. What I'm saying here is that it's that the the f six is t six y six. That's what I'm saying. So it is t six six, and then obviously if this is t five, then t six is going to be one point zero, which is what we want. So now you're then going to say the t six, which is one point zero plus the y6 right so obviously at this point you have obtained the y6 which is not point eight eight five six and the sum would be one point eight eight five six okay so this is giving us f6 we continue right now to look at the next thing
And uh, what then we are then saying here is the following. And the corrector. So now we have found the predictor. The predictor def is f6, and then we find the corrector. So, but at y at t equals 1.0, we found the predictor, and then let us find the, the corrector also. So at, at t equals 1.0, the corrector. The corrector is. Okay, you'd remember the corrector formula, you already know it because we saw it in the question. The corrector is in the Adams Maltin. There, I mean, there are different methods you're going to discuss, but Adams Maltin is one of those techniques you need to learn. And then we shall discuss the other subsequent techniques after the Adams Maltin. You have a YN plus one. YN plus. H out of 24, 9FN plus 1, plus 19FN, minus 5, FN minus 1, plus FN minus 2, minus uh, the order. H5, Y. Um, order 5. And therefore, this is XI2. So now you then have y6 so now correct y6 would be n is 5 so, so here you have y5 h out of 24 9 f6 19 f5 5 f if uh, 5 minus 1 to 4 3 Y6. What is Y5? Y5 is 0. Point, Y5 is 0. Point, uh, 0.5037. That is Y5. 0. 0.5037. Here is the difference between the two values, not point two the not point two difference, not point two difference. In terms of saying the subsequent one minus the previous like 0 0.6 minus 0 0.4 giving us 0 0.2 0 0.4 minus 0 0.2 giving us 0 0.2 at this point you have exactly 0 0.2 divide everything by 24 why why 24 because that is the formula for the corrector in the adams Morton method 9 multiplied by f6 we have already got f6 what did you get f6 to be we got it to be 1.8856 one point eight eight five six close bracket uh nineteen f five f five one point three seven one point three zero three seven that is f five f four F4. Right, F4 is not point 0.9. F4 is exactly not point 0.9. Not point 0.9. And then we have F3. F3 is not point 0.95. F3 is not 0.95. So that you have Y6.
0 0.5037. Not point two divided by twenty four nine times eight eight five six nineteen times one point three zero three seven minus five times not point nine not point nine five okay let's check this one zero point eight two two zero point Eight two two. Right, so at this point, it therefore allows us to then say the y of this is approximately not point eight two two. Why at 0.8? Because we're supposed to, uh, you know, find the approximate value of 0.8 and 1.0. The 1.0 is 0.8 to 2. And the 0.8 is what we got the, the corrector. Is uh, actually, it gave us this one, which is 0 0.5037, 0 0.5037. So this one is 0 0.5037. 0 0.5037. 0 0.5037. That is what we've got. Right, so apply the adams Moulton method to calculate the approximate value of y evaluated at 0 0.8 and at 1.0 from the differential equation, this is what you're getting. So the, the, the y at 1.0, the corrector is uh, this one, 0 0.822. And uh, obviously, the corrector here uh, gives us exactly that. So in the end, then the actual accurate values um, would be uh, the approximate values. Uh, obviously, we to approximate is 0 0.8 for the 1.0 corrector. At 1.0, the corrector is 0 0.822. And then at the at 0 0.8, it is 0 0.5037. And therefore, for today, we are done. We have just discussed this Adam Smolton. We have solved this problem in some detail. Please give it some thought and see if you understand or not. Um, we shall meet then again in our next meeting. And we shall send you the recording in the next couple of minutes. Right, 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 right. We shall send you in the next couple of what? We shall send you this recording in the next couple of minutes so that you can be in a position to uh, interpret this very, very well. Okay, obviously, uh, you have a fair chance to, uh, you'll be, yeah, we record these here. So okay. um, why do we record it? Because uh, there's no way the system can kick us out, for example. Because we oh. are on the system. I mean, the the Zoom can't kick us out, but it can it, it can potentially kick you out because you are oh. you are joining, but we are hosting you. You can but normally it works like that. That's how that's how the Zoom works. Okay, but I must thank you for joining us. We are sending you the recording in the next couple of minutes. Our meetings are on Tuesdays, Thursdays, Friday, Saturday. So yes. it's Tuesday today, and then the next one is on Friday. It's on Thursday. It's on Thursday. Right. So we thank you for joining us. We shall send you the recording. You shall participate and just make sure you understand the two methods we discussed today. What are the two methods? The, we discussed the per day approximation. We discussed the method of economizing um, a power series. Uh, we economized a power series once, but we also went on to economize 
um, a power series twice. We went on to look at the Adams Milton method um, in relation to um, finding approximate values um, of a given function, of a given differential equation by means of the, product, the, the, the predictor and corrector formulae. Right, we must thank you for joining. I know that we have gone beyond the time, but thank you for joining for joining us. Until Thursday, we shall send the recording and we chat on WhatsApp, but take care and goodbye. Thank you, bye. Thanks a lot, goodbye.